Hi and welcome to the brand new course in the Google Cloud series on Google Cloud Functions. From Google's documentation, Cloud Functions is a lightweight compute solution for developers to create single purpose stand alone functions that respond to cloud events without the need to manage a server or runtime environment. In a nutshell, Cloud Functions are Google's serverless compute offering which lets you run custom functions in response to certain events. Let us see where Google Cloud Functions lies in Google's compute hierarchy. The hierarchy starts at Compute Engine, the infrastructure as a service offering, where you get a virtual machine and you are responsible for all the other stuff like installing software, updating packages, and of course, deploying application. The next level is Platform as a Service, where Google offers App Engine. Here, you are only responsible for bringing in the application code and the runtime will be managed by Google itself. Google also takes care of scaling your application up and down based on the traffic. There are two offerings within App Engine as well, standard and flexible with slight variations in the features. Moving up the hierarchy, we get container as a service, which technically is not a Google defined level, but has been widely accepted in the industry. At this level, Google offers Kubernetes engine. This is sort of a hybrid between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service in a sense that you do have the cluster as infrastructure like a VM. But on the other hand, you are only deploying your applications to it and everything else is managed by Google. The next level is functions as a service where Google Cloud functions lie. This is where application developers only need to write functions in their favorite programming language and define the event against which the function should be invoked. The rest is taken care by Google. There is one other service which sort of lies in between container as a service and functions as a service, which is Google Cloud Run. It's a service where you bring a container with stateless web application and Google run and manage the rest. So as we move from left to right in this hierarchy, we are increasingly moving towards a serverless approach. We are increasingly responsible for less and less of infrastructure so that we can focus on building applications rather than worrying about the run and maintain of the underlying infrastructure. In this course, we will cover cloud functions in depth. So let us see some of its features. As seen in the previous slide, Cloud functions are completely serverless. There are no servers to be maintained by us. They are event driven and get executed when a certain event happens. Events like HTTP request or a message in PubSub or any event in Google Cloud Storage. There are many more events supported and we'll see them as we progress in the course. When it comes to handling the load, Google automatically scales the functions as per the frequency of events. This comes out of the box and no extra knobs needs to be tuned. And not just this, Cloud Functions comes with end-to-end -end diagnosability and observability by means of integration with Google's logging and monitoring infrastructure. While doing all these powerful stuff, you only have to pay as you use. There is no persistent cost and there is no pre-provisioned cost. You only pay for the time the function is in execution. As simple as that. But with this functions running against events construct, what can be done? Where can we use cloud functions in our own architectures? Well, cloud functions can be used to integrate with third party services. It can also be used to implement serverless mobile and IoT backends. Not just this, cloud functions can also be used to implement real time file and stream processing. By means of integration with other AI services by Google, we can also implement video and sentiment analysis using cloud functions and many more other such uses. If you found these features compelling and wish to learn cloud functions, consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that you get notified when the course videos start coming up. In this course, we'll start with the basics of cloud functions. We'll implement a couple of functions ourselves and then dig deeper into understanding the inner workings. We'll also learn about the functions framework and open source framework on which Google Cloud Functions are built.
We will then understand different types of triggers available for cloud functions and how each trigger can be used to implement certain architectures. Moving along, we will understand how to connect your cloud functions with other services running on the Google Cloud. For example, an API running in Compute Engine VM. Then we will discuss some of the cloud functions limitations and understand how we can work with those limitations in our architectures. And lastly, we will close by implementing some end-to-end -end samples that we discussed previously when we discussed where we can use the cloud functions. I hope you are as psyched about learning about cloud functions as I am to teach you. If you liked this video, please smash that like button and do not forget to subscribe to be notified when more course videos drop in. With that, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.